between you and I, this is not the first video I thought I'd be doing here in the new studio. You guys can see it's not even fully set up yet, but I did want to talk about a topic that's been pretty big in the Yu-Gi-Oh community right now. And the topic is the brand new 2024 Megatins or the 25th anniversary Megatins. Now I'm going to be honest, I hopped on Twitter today after the videos of the content creators opening it up. By the time you guys see this, it might be a couple days, but uh, yeah, I opened it up and it was not looking very good. I was seeing tweets from everyone just saying these are like the worst tins ever in terms of reprint rates, uh, pull rates and stuff like that. But I actually want to talk about why these tins are actually not that bad. Yes, that is a hot topic. That is a hot take, especially right now when people are really despising these tins and hating on these tins but i think there is a more positive way to look at these tins and a most more positive outlook i should say because i think these tins do a couple things that are really cool just generically right yes i'm gonna address the two major elephants in the room one is the secret rares there being a hundred secret rares so it's actually really difficult to complete your set of secret rares especially if you want play sets of something it becomes really difficult because uh some of the better secret rares you're gonna want multiple of and it makes it tough with all the secret rare options it's harder to pull each single one which means you got to open more packs to actually pull the one that you want especially multiple times i get it that is like one of the major major issues and then the second major issue that i've seen is um actually what's inside of the tin the contents of the tin which both of those issues that i just mentioned i'm actually going to be discussing and talking about in this video so let's get right into it today we're going to be breaking down why the 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh! Megatins and or the 25th anniversary Yu-Gi-Oh! Megatins are not that bad. So the first topic I want to cover is what we talked about earlier, which is the pull rates, right? And yes, it is a little bit more difficult to pull the secret rare cards, specifically the secret rares. That's kind of where I'm seeing a lot of people complain a lot or a lot of people are having the most angst with because there are so many secret rares. But I will say that there is a couple good things about these tins. One, in general, tins are very affordable. Unlike booster boxes where a case can run you about like 900 Canadian, sometimes a thousand Canadian in USD, and sometimes it's like six to 700 USD. Um, these tins for us Canadians here run us about 240 bucks, maybe like 180 USD, which means I can technically, in theory, if I really wanted stuff in this set, pick up like three, maybe four cases for the price of a single case of a core booster set. Now, if you think about a lot of the core booster sets in Yu-Gi-Oh, there are only very few cards you actually want from those core booster sets, right? You'll have a lot of bulk, whereas a Megaton, yes, there are some cards, of course, some reprints that are not the best reprints, but there's a lot of really good cards in here. And that's the second thing I kind of want to talk about is the actual reprints in here. And, um, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. The main thing I want to focus on right now is the pull rates. And in terms of pull rates, like I said, yes, the rates might be a little bit harder, and I think uh, I watched a House of Champs video where he talked about doing the math. You need 2.7, is it 2.7 or something like that cases? I, I can't remember, to complete the set of every single card from this, in theory, of course, uh, assuming you don't hit doubles of cards, but you need 2.7 cases and you need almost nine cases to get a place out of everything in this set. Now, of course, who's going for a place out of everything from the set? There's, there's, I mean, there might be somebody, there might be one of you guys out there that are going for a play set from everything from the set, but typically you're not really looking for play sets of every single card in the set. There are certain cards you're looking for. Now, yes, if you order, let's say, a single core sets uh, case worth of Megatons, which is, let's say, 2.7 to 3 cases. Let's say you get 3 cases, right? Okay, cool. So three cases, are, you're gonna net so many quarter century rares. Now you guys might be wondering, but Spenko, you were just talking about the secret rares and how they're hard to pull. Okay, yes, but the quarter century rares, the fact that you're able to pull one per pack means you're gonna get an abundance of them. And there's only 50 of them. So unlike the secret rares, you're actually more likely to complete your sets of quarter century rares. Now there are some really good quarter century rares in the set that I wanna talk about here as well. The blue eyes, of course, with the new support is really good. Bahama Shark is really good. Some of the cards that are underrated in my opinion are stuff like RDA that's a collector's card it's an anime card you have Ultimate Zulkin Blazar Dragon's a really good one Excel Stardust Synchro Dragon is a really good one that one doesn't see play right now in the meta but that could see play at any point that card we know how powerful it is Terra Top Silent Boots Panker Tops the Preda Plant card Ubel is obviously really meta right now Anima is really good Torrential Tribute is I'm just looking at by the way I have the list right in front of me here so I'm looking at cards like Torrential Tribute Scapegoat for old formats this kind of covers old and new there are some that are kind of iffy, I mean, the gadgets, 
I don't don't ask me why they did that. That one I can't defend. But there are some really cool cards in here. F Zero is in here. Utopia Double is in here. Light and Darkness Dragon is a really good one as well. So there's a lot of good QCRs. First Movement Solo for all my melodious players. There's a lot of good QCRs, right? Oh, Link Spider. I even see Link Spider. We got Trickstar Light Stage. Like there are so many cards. And so, yes, while the pull rates for the quote-unquote secret rares might be a little bit more difficult, you are going to be getting a lot more of the QCRs. Now, why is that good and why does that play into the whole affordability of these tins? Well, if you're buying three cases of these tins, you guys are going to get a ton of QCRs, which means that if you are looking to build a trade binder or just have cards that you kind of want to sell or hold on to even for future value, but you can even sell them immediately to get the cards that you need, you'll have an abundance of that. Now, because this set is so affordable, I think it's also a really fun set to open and it makes it so you don't feel as bad when you open a tin and you don't hit the card that you want because they're not that expensive. They are quite affordable again. And that kind of is the whole messaging that I kind of want to talk about here. They are a little bit harder to hit the specific cards that you want. However, because it's so much more affordable than a booster box, you can buy two to three to four of these tins even for the cost of a single booster box, right? So you are going to be getting a lot more in that value as well. And like I said, the trade binder aspect, if you guys pull the ultra, because keep in mind, you guys are going to pull some secret rares that you guys might not be looking for, but others might be. You guys might be pulling some ultra rares that we didn't even talk about. There are some good ultra rares in here. Like I'm looking at the ultras here. There are some pretty decent ones. I mean, upgrading, of course, Scareclaw, Kashtira over here, upgrading the super heavy samurai stuff, which I know has kind of fallen out of favor right now, but you know, that could be relevant. Instant contact is in there. You got the Horus cards as ultras, the evil Sargas ultras, the unchained cards as ultras. You have all of the Chimera cards as ultras, like Amir Swords Knight. You have Quadal over here as an ultra rare. So there's so many ultra rares in here that are really good as well chimera fusion is also an ultra rare so a lot of really good ultra rares right so ultra rares secret rares that you guys might not necessarily need you put into a trade binder to trade for those cards that you end up doing needing, right so that's the nice thing about this set the affordability the fact that it's really fun to open and then on top of that you can build these trade binders or sell the cards that you don't need to get the cards that you do need now the second thing i want to talk about are the reprints this is the one that i personally i'm not a big fan of this is something that i've seen especially in the qcr slots people talking about the qcrs being really mid people talking about cards like uh the red dragon tyrant dragon i think it's called the red dragon archfiend card that card is not great if i'm being completely honest with you galaxy Eye cypher dragon you got one of the shark exceeds monsters yeah some of those ones the gadgets specifically i know the gadgets are not great either some of those ones are not great if i'm being 100 percent honest with you not every reprint is amazing however However, there are some bangers in here there are some really really good cards for everyone which is really nice like people are forgetting there's a lot of crystal beast players out there there's a big following for crystal beast so ruby carbuncle being a qcr insane wake up the elemental hero the fact that a hero card is a qcr is insane for hero players even for competitive meta players you have Ubel, which is a QCR, which is really nice. You have cards like Blazar Dragon for all my Centurion players that lost Calamity. You guys can make Blazar now. Blazar is a QCR, which is really nice. Torrential Tribute is maybe a card that's not being played right now, but it's been a staple for such a long time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Torrential is also really good in old formats, right? Goat format. Um, you have speaking of goat, you have scapegoat in here as well. Terror Top, uh, Silent Boots, and the Predator Plant um, Scorpio. I can't remember the name right now. Those cards, while they're not relevant today, they can be good at any moment coming up in the future. Terror Top's just an extender, right? And it's back at three. PK is another deck that's one or two cards away from becoming meta again. You know that deck always comes in and out of the meta. So PK getting a QCR is really good. Hanker Tops is a staple. You have stuff like Light and Darkness Dragon, which we saw with the Horus engine. Light and Darkness Control became a real deck that actually topped multiple regionals, right? So that's a really good card. Blue Eyes is, of course, coming out with a lot of support. So QCR Blue Eyes is very nice. So the nice thing about this is, is the, the Mega Tins actually have some really good stuff. I feel like people are really thinking in the moment and maybe in the moment, yes, you're correct. F0 doesn't have a lot of play right now. Utopic Draco Future, but it was a meta relevant card for a very long time and it can become meta relevant at any point. XL Synchro Stardust Dragon was a meta relevant card, maybe not meta relevant today, but could get meta relevant at any single point. So there's a lot of really good QCR reprints in here and the secret rares, don't even get me started with the secret rares. Although there are a lot of them, there's a lot of really good secrets like Crimson Dragon, Chaos Angel, Lulu Wall Lilith, I think I'm saying that all right, this pattern, Vicious Astraloud, 
you have cards like the Red Ge the, the alternate arts are really nice by the way, Red Geki, Red Eyes, Tuning and Harpies, those are really nice alternate arts. Invocation as well as Makaba are really nice alternate arts. You have some other good secret rare reprints like Kishtera Rise Heart, Kishtera Theosis, Thrust, let's talk about Thrust, let's talk about, what's that trap card? I'm just looking at the, I'm looking at the picture here but I can't remember the name. Uh, Transaction Rollback, Bonfire is in here, the Centurion card's in here, Trident Dragion is in here, Poplar, Spirit of Ubel. Like there are so many good secret rares that while yes it might be a little oh yama yama's another good one yama's a really good one here so the typhon is in here guys the more i'm talking the, the horus cards are in here ground Zeno is in here for all my dino players sp of course is in here now i know people have been kind of complaining about sp because it look it looks like it's harder to pull i don't know but wanted is in here as well uh, i think diabella star is in here as well so you guys in theory could actually play snake eye if, if you want after these mega tins for pretty pretty good price but basically the point i'm trying to make is a lot of the people that were complaining about the reprints because they see one or two iffy reprints like i'm gonna be honest with you i, I see a card like time terror more morganite as a secret rare and i'm like well you know that card had a little bit of hype when it came out never really did anything i see a card like wannabe as a secret rare and it's like oh you know that was cool in dynamorphia i know i played it in dynamorphia but how good is it relative to the rest of the metagame i get it They're not every single secret rare is going to be amazing but there are so many good ones for so many different decks and that's exactly what these mega things are supposed to do reprint some of the best cards in the game and that's exactly what this one did it reprinted a lot of the best cards in the game which is really nice and in a really nice rarity so that's what i that, that's kind of all i wanted to say that's the two things i wanted to talk about one the affordability of the tins and even though that it is a little bit more difficult to get every single card especially in play sets from these tins it's also a lot more affordable to pick up these tins and that also makes it a lot more fun to open because if i open up one tin and i don't get the card i want you know what it's a lot easier to buy a second tin than it is to buy a second booster box info is the last set to come out right if i open up a, a, a pack of info or a box of info and I don't get the secret rares that I want, I gotta open up another box to get the secret rare, right? Whereas this, cool, I'll open up another tin, I'll open up another two, three. I'm telling you, you can open three to four tins at the cost of a single booster box. And three to four tins is also, well, let's say, let's say you get four tins. One QCR per pack, that's three per box, which means three times four is 12. You're getting 12 QCRs and you're getting the secret rares on top of that. And again, the QCRs could be stuff that you want, could be stuff that you don't want, but then you move those to get the cards that you do want, which is really nice. So all in all, that being said, I know I was kind of rambling on here, but there are so many good cards that are, 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 are reprinted in here that uh, make this set really fun to open. The set again, like I said, is very affordable. I didn't even notice like there's the Rescue Ace cards in here as well, which is really nice. Purely cards are in here, which is really nice. I think these are all common prints too. So these should be really, really easy to uh, pull, which is kind of crazy, right? So, so many good cards, so many good archetypes, so many good decks. If you guys want to build a deck, okay, so that's another thing. The last thing I want to say, and I never talked about this, but usually Megatons, you won't really be able to build cores because a lot of cores you can't find in Megatons. It looks like in these Megatons, there are a lot of cores. Now, for some people that might be good because it means that you can get decks more affordably and cheaply, which means that you can play test and practice more decks and try more decks. Personally, that's the thing I like. So thank you guys all for watching. That kind of covers it all up. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy today's video. I also want to say, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. I know the initial comments I'm going to see are this tin sucks. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to this. It does suck. Some of the things like it, it, like it does suck the fact that we didn't get a promo, right? I thought the 16 cards that were around the tin were going to be promos. I thought the secret rare token cards that they announced were going to be promos. Right, so it does suck that we got no promos. I, I think that is kind of a missed opportunity because people love promos in these tins like how they did it in last year's tins. That one I wish they did. I'm not sure why they chose not to do that. Maybe it was a wrong decision. I'm not gonna say that these are the most perfect tins, but all I'm trying to say is these tins are not that bad. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.